Hey, I'm Noni from Wormhole. I play guitar and we bring you Tech Slam. Yeah. On that, actually, it's a great uh, introduction. Uh, Tech Slam, it's actually something that Wormhole has been credited with being the inventors of and lead innovators of. Also, like congratulations on the release of Almost Human, your brand new Amen. album. Uh, also a sellout of a variant of the vinyl, which I'm a huge fan of vinyl uh, records, new, old, uh, alternatives, stuff like that. On the topic of tech slam metal, were you looking to pave a new metal road or was this just the creative direction you were heading? Uh, I think it was a little bit of both, honestly. Yeah. Uh, like cause at, when we first start out writing music, it was just it's I, and I don't know if it's like this for everybody, but I have it was definitely like this for uh, my circle. Uh, it was I couldn't even think to uh, that big because, you know, I was just struggling to get part A to work with part B. Right. Right. Like just putting something together was a challenge and like the questions i was asking myself were like way different it was not like does this achieve something it was more like does this work gotcha uh so early on it was just figuring out what worked and i think that some of our influences you know we still liked slam type shit uh, but we also like were huge, like especially when we started the band, we're like really big into Psychroptic and like Obscura was a formative band for me and Sanjay. But then uh, when the record came out, it was the second one, The Weakest Among Us, that was like, okay, now we've done something. And I guess, I don't know what something, just having gone through that experience, something changed. Mm hmm. And uh, I remember from the get-go, that second one was like, oh, this is the kind of music we're trying to make. It's tech slam. Gotcha. It's kind of, it's kind of like uh, watching kind of like watching a TV series that just launches, right? It's the first couple of episodes where you're kind of like, okay, you have my attention, but where are we going with this? It's not until you, you find your stride that you actually like, this is where we are. This is where we're headed. This is the story we want to I tell. I skip season one of The Office every single time. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's well, I don't blame you. It's it really is like season two where like they, they finally get into a groove and they they start to really mesh with their their personalities. So no, I get it absolutely. Yeah, so that honestly might be the best analogy for Wormhole. Uh, you can think of Genesis like season one of The Office, mm -hmm. and then yeah, the second one we. We figured it out. Yeah. So actually, I had a chance to listen to uh, all five of your records uh, from Existence Gap all the way up to Almost Human. There is a notice noticeable difference in writing, in structure, and creativity as you move forward within the albums. And I, I will admit, The Weakest Among Us and Almost Human, they are dare I say, in my opinion, they are almost part one, part two of a journey that you've actually yeah. like started to make steps towards. That's, that's a pretty fair analysis, I would say. Yeah, you think so? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, the first record fits in there somewhere as like the precursor. But yeah, uh, we, we make a conceited like a big, it's important for us that like every record is different in some capacity. Mm. Uh, but usually I feel like we don't really have to think too hard about what, how to do that. It's just kind of comes out naturally. Like we find things we want to do. Uh, like after the weakest among us, it was like, I wanted the production to be a little heavier. Mm. Right? I, like, I love the production on the weakest among us and the way that it turned out. Mm. Uh, but I wanted the album to reflect the live performance a little bit more. Uh, because, you know, it wasn't until The Weakest Among Us was finished that we started really touring and playing shows. Right. Uh, another thing was introducing some structure. Mm. Uh, like, I don't know. A lot of the songs on the first two albums, like, there's themes, but there's not, you know, it's not easy to identify, like, oh, this is a verse, this is a chorus. Right, right. Right, and... Uh, 
you know, that's just something that we realized we wanted to do and would uh, facilitate getting this idea across that we're trying to get across. Mm. You guys are uh, like, you make no bones about it. You lay out your influences right out in front of everyone. And immediately looking at the artwork for The Weakest Among Us, I thought, Metroid. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, there's, this is like Metroid if I was tripping balls on acid. Um, but then uh, going through and listening, like you, you incorporate uh, some fun Easter eggs as well as references and uh, throwbacks. And I, I have to ask, like, do you think SpongeBob SquarePants is the most metal cartoon out there? Oh, oh man, <laughs> that's tough because I, I think uh, Metalocalypse is probably the most yeah. metal cartoon out there. Absolutely, but. Uh, by the end of the decade, Wormhole will have made SpongeBob the most metal cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> I I love it. Like there's 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 um there's impressions and there's throws in there and there's it's not just SpongeBob too, of course, clearly. But uh, like you guys, you guys are like I said, you very much show your your love and your interests and your influences uh in front of everyone and it's it's pop culture it's cartoons it's video games like i i do appreciate and absolutely love being a video game fan clearly uh <laughs> <laughs> like i love how you guys do that are there stuff there that people haven't uh sorted out or figured out like little oh so much really I mean, they're all just, most of them are just like really, really obscure Metroid references that I don't think anybody will ever get. Right. Okay. Uh, or maybe somebody, I don't know. Uh, there's one quote that I do think about from time to time that helps me when I'm thinking about like, oh, no one's going to notice this. Is that like, nobody's going to notice every detail, mm -hmm. uh, but everybody collectively will notice every detail. Yep. Uh, so maybe... Maybe there's uh, something out there. Uh, there are some that people get wrong. Really? I'm trying to think of some. Oh, okay. I'm going to sound like a total like dork explaining this, by the way. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> so we have the one song on Genesis, Nurtured in a Poison Womb. Yep. That has a Courage the Cowardly Dog sample in it. I listened to that track. I didn't pick that up. It's really subtle. Uh, it's really quiet, but it's there. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, and there's like a bunch of references with like the song names uh, and the lyrics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like wave quake generator, plasma artillery cannon, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a villain in Metroid, and he has two weapons, right? Weapon A is the wave quake generator. And weapon B is the plasma artillery cannon. So that's that's brilliant. Like again, like, I, 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 unfortunately, I've only like I only had a short period of time to really scan things. But like I did see references. But yeah, I would not have picked up that at all. And I, I appreciate the lore. That is awesome. That's dedication yeah. to. I love that lore, history, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it like? It's like there's artists out there that will uh, like write a song with a certain premise in mind and then move forward from there with a theme. And then there's other times where, okay, there's a song we just slap together, but we just like, what do we add to it? Is it situations where you try to make references or is there, you know, just kind of like there's a spot here where we could fit something in? Uh I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. Because, like, we're definitely looking for them. Mm. Uh, and sometimes it's like, uh, I don't know, like, we're looking for them and we're hoping for them in some places, but sometimes they end up where you don't really want them to be. Really? <laughs> but, like, well, I mean, it, it's kind of, you have preconceived ideas about your, your songs and your music, right? Right. So, if you wrote like the best song you'd ever written and you thought that it uh, accomplished something that, uh, you know, nobody else really had, uh, uh, which is the goal with every Wormhole song, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
Are you gonna put a SpongeBob sample on it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, only if you feel like it's proper, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. Um. So there was like the uh, TikTok lady. We put her on the new record. Uh, and like that was one of those songs that I was like so proud of, and I was like, man, I could just put this on here. And it would be amazing, but like, you know, it's, it's on there forever now. Yeah. <laughs> we put this stamp on there. There's no removing it whatsoever. But I have no regrets. I'm very, I'm happy that we, that we, every time we do something like that, I'm happy that we ended up doing it. Yeah. No, that's good. That's, that's, that's the way you want to be. You don't want to look back and have the regret. Like there's always going to be that, uh, I am my own worst critic regret of like, we could have worked on this a little bit more. We could have done this. We could have like studio magic dial could have went up just a touch bit more. But when you, when you release something like your most recent album, almost human, like first of all, again, like congratulations on the success it's seen and the attention has gotten so far and you know it's 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 good it's it's gratifying it's pleasing to know that you're happy with the end product like this this was a project and an album that took quite a lot of work to get to yeah it was quite a quite a journey you mentioned earlier um forgive me if i get this name wrong is sanjay is your brother and he's in the band yes so what is the dynamic for anyone unfamiliar with Wormhole? What is the dynamic of the band Wormhole? Uh, well, it started as a bedroom project with me and Sanjay. Okay. Uh, so that was kind of, since then, it's we've kind of been like the main creative force. Uh, you know, we kind of write the, we write the music, but we also do it for the most part pretty separately. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Sanjay writes half the record, I write half the record, and maybe we'll uh, collaborate on parts here and there when the other person's struggling or when we have like a really cool idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's kind of what it is. It's me and Sanjay are kind of the creative directors, I would say. Right. Um, but that being said, like when we do, uh, you know, when we're doing bass parts and drum parts, like. I mean, Matt basically reimagines all the drum parts that we give him. We give him a skeleton, you know, kind of rough idea. Uh, and there is a lot of collaboration with uh, Matt, Basil, and Julian on their parts. Mm-hmm. It's, it's good that you have yeah. that, like, that collaboration and you also have, like, the open forum of just bring what you have and see what you can help make work. Like someone might have hear something differently. Like Matt comes up with a lot of stuff on the records. I'm like, like I would have never thought to do that. Like, yeah. well, that's 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 what you want out of bandmates, right? You want a different perspective, while at the same time traveling in this down the same direction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of traveling, uh, your tour schedule has been seen as one of the most aggressive among bands of your caliber these days. Is it? Is being on the road a chance to continue to be creative and also to connect and reconnect with your fans? Uh, I see it as more of a celebration. Okay. Uh, Every show to me is a celebration of our music. Or Mm -hmm. for, not to me, but for me, it's my time to celebrate the music. Gotcha. Because that's the time that I I get to see in front of me everybody uh, reacting to it. Um, I think like you know we're camped in our little van on tour we're not like riding in night lines or anything right. so it's harder for us to write music on tour uh, like Sanjay will make a beat here and there sometimes mm. which I should try I should start doing that more yeah. start writing some more. <laughs> it's not me coming down on you I'm just asking a question <laughs> um but the tour definitely, like, you know, they, they influence us, too, when we come home, though. Mm. Uh, like, you know, after, you know, we did a bunch of tours with a bunch of really technical bands uh, on The Weakest Among Us. Like, we did, I think Beyond Creation, Archspire were the big ones that we had after that record mm. was finished. Uh, 
and then naturally like almost human turned out way more technical than the last two records really um and then you know when we went on tour with shout of intent uh last year this time uh and after we came back uh, I started writing songs, and they weren't deathcore songs. You know, they were still, you know, wormhole tech slam songs, mm-hmm. but they were very structured. There was a clear verse, a clear chorus, a clear bridge. Um, and then we just came back from analepsy a couple months ago, and then you know, writing all the heavy stuff now. Like I, I do have to know because like I, I have seen your albums, and your merch line is incredible. Um, I, I do want to know like who is the artist behind this incredible like menagerie of illustrations uh we have a couple different sources a lot of them were pulled like some of them were just pulled from like the album covers uh, and those all came from different people uh like lord again pedro sana he did the first two record covers mm. i don't remember we had this blue and orange monster shirt that i really like i don't know who did that one uh one was from like a random tattoo artist in Seattle that like a friend from high school knew. I think. Oh, and then the the SpongeBob Tech Bob Slam Pants. Yeah. Uh, that was Scotty Bates. Oh, cool. Which uh, anyone fam- familiar with Scotty Bates' work uh, probably immediately recognized that as uh, one of his. <laughs> right on. So, uh, so it's a combination of actually having work done, but also seeking out like other artists to help provide like the image and the illustrations yeah. you're looking for. I mean, the real thing is like it has to be like I want it to be sick, right? Like it can't be okay. It can't be kind of cool. It's gotta fuck. Like it's gotta be. It has to be something that when you see it across the room, you're like, that's the coolest shirt in the venue. Um, and that's a different thing for different people. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're just very careful about the artwork that we choose. We actually like rejected a couple uh, album covers for Almost Human. Uh, well, we didn't reject them; like we paid for them. Right. But uh, we didn't show them to anybody. <laughs> right. No. Fair. Uh, just because, like, you know. The artwork, you got to get it right. Yeah. It's got to be sick. Yeah. No, absolutely. And and looking at, like, what I, what I see in front of me, again, on Bandcamp, like, there is, like, you can see a thread that flows through every single piece of artwork. They're all as if they were within the same universe. And, yeah, okay, The Weakest Among Us, like I said, the first thing I thought was Metroid, but still it is, it looks as though it matches evenly with the other album covers and it's, they're like beautiful and eye catching and the t-shirts like it's, it's, it's making my bank account cry. <laughs> quite <right. laughs> So like I, I do, I do love that. And knowing who creates this stuff is always interesting because I don't have an artistic bone in my body. I think a lot of the credit has to go to the logo artist, honestly, Chris Horst. Okay. Because I think a lot of these t-shirts, the reason that they really work is because the logo pops. This is true. This is absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a couple of questions uh, that I was able to grab from some of your fans, if you wouldn't mind. We'll, we'll get into these. Yes. Okay. These my, <laughs> might be my favorite question. Fair enough. All right. So off of Instagram, Rachel asks, uh, would you invite any of the voice actors from SpongeBob or any other cartoon actor to be on your album? Uh, yeah. Any one of them. Any. Yeah. Uh, they can email us. If they're watching, they can email us at wormhole slam at gmail it's it's not uh, it's not out of the realm of personality i mean um what's his face uh, the guy who actually voices spongebob was uh, oh, uh doing tom a Kenny? yeah tom Kenny. he he was uh doing a uh, duet with uh cory taylor from slipknot like not a few months ago oh wow i have i i would like to think that he's a really cool guy i mean he dressed up like patchy the pirate and all that so i imagine uh, he'd be down with it. Yeah, I think he'd probably. 
I, I really want to know what he thinks of Tech Bob. <laughs> I do wonder. Uh, yeah, I do wonder as well. Yeah. <laughs> but but imagine, oh, geez, like just imagining the possibilities. You get um, Rob Paulson and Maurice LaMarche pinky in the brain to come on to a wormhole album. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> that would, uh, I put, I want them on every track. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have them narrate the album, like give commentary in between songs. I wouldn't blame you. That'd be awesome. Uh, again, off of Instagram, Crystal asks, I watched the Instagram video of Peelish Flesh a dozen times a day since it was posted two months ago. What other guests can I look forward to sharing the stage with you? We have a spot in the set that's designated. If we can get somebody on stage with us mm-hmm. from the tour package or from uh, the local stage, or a friend like they're coming up there for that so uh if you can do vocals and you're good friends with us and trying to like pal around with us at the show yeah uh maybe someday it could be you (laughs) we've actually like literally we just sometimes we'll get like a friend Mm -hmm. from the city to just come up uh so it it could be somebody that you know that's awesome. Actually, connected to that, the next question for, uh, from Patreon, Brandy asks, would you accept baked goods from your loyal fans like myself on tour? Wait, is that Brandy? Brandy, uh, B-R-A-N-D-I. Oh, okay. I thought it was... Uh, there is another Brandy in Chicago that uh, brings us puppy chow and gummy bears every time. So... Uh, and like we love her we love uh george like uh instant instant best friends for life uh, <laughs> we would totally take baked goods and uh we'll hang out and have a good time well that's good it's, it's i guess it's good to know too who knows you could find yourself with special brownies at some point in time <laughs> <laughs> A final question again from Patreon. Uh, Danielle asks, is there a reference you're trying to place in a song that just hasn't happened yet? Uh, there's a lot that have worked uh, in the demo, mm. but like we, like they just never, like they pop, they, they work. Mm. They just, they work in that song. Right, and then when we try to put it in somewhere else, it doesn't quite pop like that. Uh, so, in Rick and Morty, the Strawberry Smiggles commercial, uh, where the guy gets eaten alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's one. Uh, there's a couple from SpongeBob. There's one where, oh, jeez, I think it's the P- oh the pizza episode of SpongeBob. Okay. Uh, where Squidward says uh, he doesn't care about the customer. Gotcha. So there's like a, there's a gasp, like, a, and everything stops for a second. Right. Uh, so I had that lined up in a song, and then during that gap, there's like Squidward or SpongeBob is all like surprised, like Squidward, like, uh, and then the slam hits. <laughs> so it worked amazing in that song. Yeah. Uh, well, I have not been able to uh, find a place for it since. And that one has stuck with me. Gotcha. I would like to find a place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got one more question for you. Uh, this one's from Jane. And she asks, I love your work. I love your albums. I am a hardcore wormhole fan, but I have a hard time trying to get a few of my friends to listen to your music. Maybe I'm just a little too aggressive. What would you suggest be the introduction song I present to them from your work? Uh, probably System Erase. Okay. I think that's got the hooks. I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm assuming they're not really a death metal guy, death metal fans. Uh, if they're that turned off by it, mm. uh, System Erase or DS3, right? Ink Swarm. I, I'm think, I'm just thinking stuff with like some. Pre- my mom liked Elysium. Actually, that's, uh, she that, said was that was one of my favorite. favorites too. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm just thinking something with a little pretty. That might might be a little busy for someone who's a new listener. Mm. So I think uh, Ink Swarm or System Erase. Gotcha. Okay. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> or the gas system. The gas system. But really, you just got to bring them to a show. Because that's the way <laughs> I think, they get it right away. Exactly. I think, I think that's the, the end-all, be-all answer to, this, to the situation. I got one more question before you before I let you go. Um, and this is something I like to ask my guests. What is something that uh, the general public doesn't know about you? Like a, a secret uh, a skill or interest or something like that? Simply because they have not asked. I've mentioned this once or twice in interviews before but like i am like really into japanese history really uh specifically like the meiji to the uh showa era okay uh so this is like and like literally i could double this interview length right now fair enough just by talking about it. <laughs> it's it's that intriguing um, to you you're, you're you're pulled in by that there's a whole story that because really? that's the way i see it that to me is like there's this whole arc to it where uh and looking at it from a storytelling perspective uh japan is like they isolate themselves for 200 years yeah which that in and of itself that is fucking crazy said none of you were allowed in uh the dutch were famously allowed to come to trade uh what's lesser known is that the japanese specifically built an island for them like separate from japan and they weren't allowed to leave that island the dutch so they were allowed to trade but they technically weren't actually allowed to come on to japan <laughs> So, so they they created a basically they created a neutral zone trading post for the Dutch yeah, to basically. to show up, and that was like this is it, this is the line, do not cross. Yeah, something like that. That is wild. What's um, what sparked this interest? Uh, so I I mean I'd always been interested in history. It started with like World War Two as a kid because we're, we're playing like. You know, we grew up in the early 2000s and had like a computer so we were playing uh like medal of honor and uh battlefield uh so that kind of started the world war ii interest mm. uh and there's like so much world war ii media out there and you know i just for whatever reason i was very interested in the axis powers gotcha uh because I, I like i like seeing them my favorite thing in history is like watching something then build it up and then it collapses <laughs> um, and those are like my favorite historical figures yeah have some kind of arc like that like all like obviously germany that's an easy one to see yeah uh chiang kai-shek in china it's another very interesting one nationalist china in the civil war uh and then japan's right because they start as this isolated country. They have nothing. They're getting bullied as fuck by every uh, Western power. Mm. Uh, and they they kind of come to the conclusion that the only way that they're going to be able to stop getting bullied is to develop their own empire. And now that they're their own world power, they can tell other world powers, fuck off, we're not going to do this anymore. Right. Um, so that kind of starts this journey to japan slowly becoming this big big empire uh and then it climaxes with uh world war ii and uh the atomic bomb yeah uh of course there was you know that's from the storytelling perspective but you know the story goes on for quite a bit after the war too oh yeah um uh, you know, the repercussions and the occupation. Yeah, I don't know, just, and it, so my uh, grandfather lived in Japan, so we spent a lot of summers in Japan. Oh, okay. Uh, so I was already interested in the losers, the bad guys, because, uh, that you know, you know, when you're a kid, you're, you want to be edgy, they're the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. um, you want to go against the grain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I get it. Of course, well, like, you know, I was definitely not, like, sympathizing. Right. All that you know, I was destined for uh, 
to study Japanese history. <laughs> yeah, it was just there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Like, there's nothing more intriguing than watching uh, it, an entity, a power, a movement that, you know, right or wrong, uh, it's it's trajectory and then ultimately where it all ends. Like, that is, it is an I, intriguing I, story. It, it's. I think it's more interesting when it's wrong because it's like, how the fuck did they get there? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Like, <laughs> no, absolutely. It's like watching. It's like driving past a car accident that just makes no sense on the, on the highway. You drive past. Yeah, you go, how the fuck exactly. did that happen? Yeah. So I get it, and that's a that's an awesome answer. That's that. Thank you for that. <laughs> so uh, I'll I'll let you go because I know you just uh, you're itching to get back to your post workout celebration there, and. Um, <laughs> I don't want to stop you from that anymore, but um, thanks for letting me uh, take up some of your time today. The band is Wormhole. You can find them on Bandcamp, and they are also a part uh, of Season of Mist. Um, the brand new album, Almost Human. Uh, c- congratulations and good luck on continued success. Uh, do you have uh, another album on the way, or is it tour time? Uh, both. Both. Awesome. Both. Awesome. Always, always writing music. Always working. Cool. Always tour time. Where can people follow you to get updates and uh, to maybe uh, catch a show in the near future? Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Wormhole Sl- or Wormhole Tech Slam on uh, IG uh, and TikTok, uh, Wormhole on Facebook, all over. Bandcamp, Big Cartel, Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, iTunes, you name it, we're there. Uh, the record is 26 minutes. It's really good. So if you haven't heard it, only 26 minutes, that's your drive to work. Maybe half on your way to work, half on your way back. And that's my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Like a fucking pro, my man. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for making it to the end of this episode. And if you don't mind, whatever it is that you are enjoying this episode on, be it on YouTube, the video form, or wherever you're listening to this, just please give me a follow. That way you can keep up to date with new episodes as well. It shows me that you are listening and you want to more content and also it helps me out a lot so if you don't mind follow subscribe whatever it is that it is possible on this platform of your choosing and if you want to support me further the mediajack.ca there is patreon there is also other episodes and how to enjoy those and there is a merch store and of course if you join me on patreon you can actually get a shout out and be invited to ask questions to future guests or get a credit just like our executive producer yet again red wolf don again the mediajack.ca is where you can go for all of that and more thanks for joining me take care